Hey folks, due to popular demand, I decided to revisit the classic Frostclaw Nova Runemaster that was popular in the 1.0 cycle. I think I've come up with something that you will like. Uh, this is a Thousand Corruption Echo, and full disclosure, I am in offline. However, this is all gear that my online characters do have access to. This is just for the sake of testing, and let's jump into it. So you'll notice right away that the resting ward level is pretty high. We're at about 4,500 when out of combat. And when in combat, the ward numbers can still get to over 10,000, which is quite strong. Of course, depending on how many things we're hitting and how many casts we're doing and all that stuff. But in general, the damage is still quite good. The ward is still quite good. And our mobility is also very high. We have a pretty good amount of cooldown on our abilities. And we don't have any Runic Invocation since it has been nerfed. Now, if you're very attentive, you might have noticed that there is something weird about this Frostbond Nova Rune Master. And I'll show you here in a second. as we tank the Explosion of Thunder Dragon. The weird thing about this Frostbone of a Rune Master is that it actually isn't a Rune Master at all. So what started out as a bit of a joke turned into a sad realization that the new best way to play the old Nova Rune Master build might actually be as a Spellblade now. So with the changes in 1.1, there were some pretty big nerfs to Rune Master. One of them being the Runic Invocation, Rare Winds Frostguard, it used to give 30% DR and now it doesn't. That was one of the biggest reasons that a lot of builds did pick Rune Master, as it was incredibly strong. But the other big thing is that some of the nodes later in the tree of Rune Master received some pretty big nerfs. So these were the nodes that other classes didn't have access to. Uh, so previously, this board gained on crit used to be uncapped, which was huge for Frostclaw. Now it has a cap. Uh, the node here that gave you a bunch of cooldown recovery. This was also nerfed from per 4 to per 6. So that's a 50% nerf, pretty significant. Uh, and as I said, the Runic Invocation nerf was also pretty big. And in addition to all the changes to Rune Master, Spellblade itself also got some buffs. Uh, later in the tree of Spellblade, we have some pretty cool stuff. So the most interesting node in the Spellblade tree, I think, is now the crit chance per 15 int. So this is actually base crit. You can see in the gray text here, it says if you have 24 int, you would gain 1.6 base crit. As an int stacker build that this is, we have up to 200 int or maybe even more. And that means that we're getting a significant amount of base crit. And also because the uh, spell crit per int node in the sorcerer tree is also very early on in the tree, we get access to both base crit and increased crit with int scaling. That means with just those two nodes alone, that's already enough to spell crit cap us without taking any spell crit on our gear or idols. So you'll notice here, instead of spell crit, which I used to have on the rune master build, we now have cast speed and crit multi instead. So we get a significant amount of extra crit multi. You can even get it on your helmet as a second prefix. You could get lightning crit multi here, or also on your chest piece, you could get lightning crit multi. So it's pretty easy to get up to 500% crit multi or something like that. Pretty crazy. And even though you're using losing the 20% um, more crit multi in the rune master tree, you more than make up for it for the spell crit that you no longer need on your gear. So what's really interesting, if we go back to this character, is we actually have, with no spell crit on our gear, 237% spell crit. That's actually pretty crazy. It's a huge amount of spell crit. We're significantly overcapped. And you're thinking that might be a waste. For Frostclaw, you don't get anything out of being overcapped. But that's not actually true. So 
it turns out that there is a pretty cool node here that gives you freeze rate multi per crit chance. And then there's another node in the tree that gives you ward per freeze rate multi. So I actually tested this node as I was really curious how it worked. And it turns out that it is per bounce of Frostclaw. That means that you get this active five times for each cast of Frostclaw, which we're casting around five times per second. So basically where it says 40% uh, freeze rate multi will give you one ward. It's actually more like uh, 8% freeze rate multi gives you one ward. And we get a pretty significant amount of freeze rate multi. And that means the 5% per one, we're well over a thousand freeze rate multi uh, just from this one node alone. So we're getting a crazy amount of freeze rate multi, which gives us a crazy amount of ward. And then in the spellblade tree, part of our pathing we can take more freeze rate multi. So normally this is kind of a dead node for spellcasters, but you can take this and it ends up being somewhat useful, gives us extra ward. And it turns out when you take Spellblade, you can actually play a non-melee class and play Spellblade and spec into it, and you end up with no wasted nodes at all. So you can see here the first node here is Ellie Damage and Ellie Res. This is not a wasted node for us. We have the Fire Aura Chance. This is a bit of a wasted node, but it's for travel anyway. We have more int, which is very valuable. We have the freeze rate multi, which as I said, gives us ward. We have int here and ward decay. This is all very good. We have dex. Normally we wouldn't really care that much. It gives us a little bit of dodge, but it also gives us increased crit chance. And a lot of our stuff does have dex as well. So we get a pretty significant amount of crit chance that's converted into ward for our build. So that's why our ward numbers are still fairly high. And then moving over, we have a bunch of int and ward per second. Very good. And then we have the huge node here, crit chance per int. So base crit, very strong. And back to this dex node, what's really cool is because we don't need any base crit or spell crit on any of our gear, we can run the bone clamor, which is an extremely strong helmet. And it also has dex and int, both of which give us a bunch of crit chance. And then the same with the blood of the exile boots. These are also best in slot boots. They also have dex and int, which gives us a bunch of crit chance. So all of that becomes ward. Red rings, the dex and int, all of it becomes ward and crit chance. Uh, everything just fits together so nicely for this build. Uh, I did end up changing the blessing. I went with the spell leech instead of the crit multi here, uh, because otherwise it's very hard to have enough points to go into the sorcerer tree to get the lightning. I didn't think it was worth it. I just grabbed cast speed and spell crit, um, and then... Yeah, it all just works together extremely well, and there's synergy pretty much everywhere. So jumping over to the skills, most of the stuff here is the same. Nova is pretty much the same. Flame Ward, pretty much the same. This is up to your preference. We don't have a need for Runic Invocation, so you can kind of have elements wherever you want. Snap Freeze, I think, is a huge quality of life. Then Flame Rush, I took because of Frenzy, and then it gives us Ward Burst after using Flame Rush. Uh, if you want, you can use this to get your Lightning Shred, but we have it from Lagan Blessing anyway. Um, and then you're consuming your Ignites if you have any, a bit of DR. Uh, so that's extremely good. Another synergy that you could have with the Freeze Rate thing is the Freeze Rate multi here in the Teleport Tree. So if you spec over to the left here, you can get Stun Immunity and Freeze Rate multi. So this 600% Freeze Rate multi, I tested it. And it does give you 75 ward per cast of uh, Frostclaw, so that is very significant. This would be a pretty viable option if you want, uh, but it does take your cooldown up quite a bit. So I did prefer taking the Flame Rush, which gives you ward per cast anyway. 180 is a lot. Um, and a little bit of DR and all that stuff. This is pretty nice too. The Frostclaw tree is a little bit different than before. We don't take Volley of Glass, but because most of our damage comes from the Novas applying Spark Charges, it's not that big of a deal. We lose some single target, but it's uh, sort of sort of whatever. Uh, we do take the Lightning, because that gives us plus one and access to the Mana Efficiency, which we need. Then, as I said, we have the crit, uh, Freeze Rate Multi per crit chance. We have the Ward per Freeze Rate Multi. We have all the additional casts. This all just works really well together. Uh, yeah, so if that is something that you want to give a try, definitely do so. And yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. It's very, very good. 
I'll be sharing the planner in the description if you guys want to try it out. This is probably a better option than the Rune Master Nova, so a little bit unfortunate that that's the state that we're in, but I'll take it. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far, please consider leaving a like on the video and hitting that sub button for more videos like this. Catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.